Stop what you are doing and consider this. Right now, as you watch this video, your government is borrowing approximately $1.4 million every single minute. Not every week, not every day. Every minute. This isn't theoretical economics. It is the silent, accelerating clock of the American financial system. You pay taxes, you save diligently, you plan for your future, but have you ever stopped to ask yourself what your individual savings are worth when the system you rely on is running a deficit that compounds faster than you can ever earn? Is your stability truly based on your income? Or is it an illusion built on a debt mountain that is growing by nearly $100 billion every month? If you live in an English-speaking country, the stability of your entire world, from your mortgage rate to the price of your groceries, is tethered to the fate of the US dollar, a system now approaching a speed of accrual that history proves is simply unsustainable. For the first time, we are not discussing if the music stops, but the exact moment the speed of this debt forces the US, the global financial titan, into a scenario once considered unthinkable, a sovereign default. The US national debt is not just a number on a spreadsheet. It is the single largest financial experiment in human history. To understand the gravity of $1.4 million per minute, you must first understand the engine of this accrual. It's a machine perfected over five decades, since the dollar was completely unanchored from gold in 1971. Before that time, every dollar printed had a tether to reality. After 1971, the dollar became a pure promise, and the government's ability to borrow became virtually limitless. This freedom created a perverse incentive. Why raise taxes, which is politically toxic, when you can simply issue more debt? Why cut spending, which is unpopular, when you can kick the can down the road by selling treasury bonds? This is the central financial trick, the illusion that debt can be managed forever. The mechanism is simple but devastating. The government spends more than it collects, issues treasury bonds to cover the difference, and the world buys them, betting on the continued stability of the American empire. This is the financial strategy of a superpower, but it is also the trap. The US has leveraged its status as the world's reserve currency to finance its own expansion and its own excesses, essentially exporting its inflation and its financial risk globally. Every nation, every major central bank, and every large corporation holds U.S. debt, making the problem everyone's problem. But the debt is accelerating. It took over 200 years for the U.S. debt to reach its first trillion dollars. Today, a trillion dollars is added faster than some governments can organize a cabinet meeting. This exponential curve is what separates the current crisis from all previous historical debts. It is a mathematical inevitability that every exponential curve eventually meets its breaking point, and the $1.4 million per minute accrual rate is the flashing warning sign. To the English-speaking world, where financial systems are considered robust and rule-bound, the idea of a default feels like a science fiction scenario. But history is littered with the corpses of empires that forgot this simple truth. Think of ancient Rome, the original financial giant. Its primary currency, the denarius, was nearly pure silver. But emperors, facing soaring military costs and a vast expensive empire, chose the silent political trick, currency debasement. They slowly and secretly reduced the silver content, replacing it with cheaper base metals. They printed the same coin, with the same name, but with less value. The illusion was maintained for a time, but the effect was devastatingly real. People quickly realized their savings were being stolen by the state. Confidence evaporated, prices soared, inflation became the silent mandatory tax. This is the same playbook the U.S. government is using today, only the silver is replaced by trust, and the debasement is done through massive money creation and debt issuance. It is not done with copper. It is done with keystrokes and bond market manipulation. 
The system is still draining your purchasing power every time the U.S. debt clock ticks another $1.4 million. The core lesson is the same. When a governing power loses respect for the value of its own money, it is a sign that the end game is approaching. The historical precedents are clear. Once a nation fully commits to financing its lifestyle through endless debt, the clock is set for the final reckoning. The primary illusion is the belief that the U.S. can never default because it can always print more dollars. This is only half true. The real danger of a U.S. sovereign default is not the simple inability to pay, but the political and strategic choice to stop payment on certain obligations. A default isn't necessarily a refusal to pay all debt. It can be a failure to pay principal or interest on a specific due date. The political chaos required to reach that point, a budget showdown, a legislative deadlock, is becoming more frequent, not less. And that is the true risk. When the US government uses its debt ceiling as a political weapon, it is actively playing with the foundation of the global financial order. The moment a U.S. Treasury bond payment is missed, even by a day, the financial world shatters. The stability you take for granted is gone. Every financial contract, every trade agreement, every savings portfolio based on the dollar's supremacy is instantly called into question. Your 401k, your pension fund, the value of your home, all of it is anchored to the faith in the U.S.'s ability and willingness to service this debt. And when the debt is growing by $1.4 million per minute, that faith is becoming harder and harder to maintain. What does a sovereign default mean for an English-speaking citizen? It means the dollar's reserve status, the great stabilizer of the post-war world, is instantly jeopardized. It means chaos, not just recession. Imagine a world where U.S. Treasuries, long considered the safest asset on the planet, are now marked as high risk. Capital flight would be immediate, not from the U.S., but from the entire global financial system. Suddenly, the debt is not just a ledger entry, it's a global contagion. For the average person, this translates into a sharp, painful loss of purchasing power. Interest rates would spike to levels not seen in a generation, crippling the housing market and commercial activity. Inflation, already a significant problem, would become hyperinflationary as foreign nations who previously held the debt start dumping their dollar assets back onto the market. The cost of every imported good, from electronics to food staples, would become prohibitively expensive. This is the financial war that the English-speaking public is not prepared for. It is not fought with tanks, but with the sudden violent destruction of trust in the currency you hold. Every empire in history has faced this reckoning, and for the US, the moment is being rushed by the relentless 1.4 million per minute accrual. The political system cannot fix this exponential problem with linear solutions, yet it refuses to acknowledge the severity of the crisis. The biggest paradox of our time is that the same system creating the debt mountain also tells you how to protect yourself. But true protection cannot be found in paper promises or government-backed assets alone. If the collapse of the denarius in Rome taught us anything, it is that real wealth is independent of the state's printing press. Real wealth is the ability to produce, to trade, to own tangible assets that survive a monetary reset. It is owning land, not just a mortgage. It is acquiring real skills, not just a paycheck denominated in a depreciating currency. It is holding assets, like certain commodities or non-sovereign currencies, that the government cannot simply print more of. The debt clock is ticking at $1.4 million per minute, and that speed is the final warning. The system is designed to keep you dependent on the promises it issues. Your only true defense is to minimize that dependency, to build a financial fortress whose walls are made of value, not paper.
You must move from being a passive recipient of the system, yes, promises to an active participant who recognizes the history of financial collapse. Do not wait for the news headline confirming the default. By then, the damage is already done. The question is not how much money you have in the bank, but how much value you can hold when the system's trust and the dollar's supremacy finally runs out. The $1.4 million per minute is not just a number. It is the cost of your delayed future, a silent bill that will eventually be delivered. And history proves that when that bill arrives, it is always paid by those who were not paying attention.